Welcome to Einstein Middle School. Today we will be going over our volleyball lesson and breaking down our psychomotor testing along with our cognitive testing. Today I will be your physical education teacher along with my colleagues. My name is Mr. Barron and I hope you guys enjoy the lesson. Okay, so now we'll be going over the demonstration of the bump that we did in class. Uh, I'm going to start with the cues and those cues are one hand over the other to start. So you're going to have your hands come together here, thumbs together, and now your forearms need to be flat. So you got one hand over the other, forearms need to be flat. The ball will make contact here with your forearms. And then from there, you're going to want to move to the ball. So if the ball's a little bit to the left, step and get under it and move to the ball. And now the last cue, bend and explode. So when you get to the ball and you move under it, don't forget to bend your knees and explode, getting that power. Okay, so because I'm all dressed up right now and um, I'm not on natural volleyball court, I'm gonna snip in a quick video of some live volleyball. I want you guys to pay attention to those cues and see if you can't see them for yourself. The Olympic champions on match point. And there it is, it's the Chinese. All right, moving on to the assessment and data collection of the psychomotor testing form. Um, so when going over this rubric, we made sure to make it very specific and Sean will go into that a little bit more and he'll break it down the next slide. But we did make sure it was very specific and was focused. So each observer will be able to move on from the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth step with all defining and different um, categories for each rubric. For example, from going from one to two, you have the, somebody will get a one for being stationary, where two, if you take one step to the ball, you would get a two on the rubric. So we made sure to make the rubric very easy for all the observers to decipher and grade and so we could all come with the same results. If um, two different observers were um, observing the same student, we would be able to come up with the same results because of how specific and focused our rubric was. Now moving on to slide eight, we'll be going over the psychomotor data graphs. If you look on the left-hand side, you will see the blue and orange line. The blue is representing the cognitive pretest, and the orange is representing the cognitive post-test. Um, as you can see, the lines overall generally increase. And if you look to the right, you will see our line graph where our data continues to increase and overall learning was made. On the psychomotor data graphs on the left-hand side, you can see that the y-axis is the rubric scores and the x-axis is the students. So we have 16 students that participated in this lesson. And um, according to the rubric, Everyone did very well, so we we're very pleased to see that. Um, some of these strengths and weaknesses that go along with these data points and using a rubric as our testing strategy. Um, some of the weaknesses are observers could have assessed a time when a state mistake was made. This means that each observer could potentially look at the same student and come up with a different result. Um, we tried to mitigate this but essentially, if, if two observers were observing one student, they could potentially come up with two different results. This could be because one was observing at a time as a mistake was made. Rubrics only account for finished products and not the learning in between and the effort put forth. This means that the rubric is really only watching and the observers are only gonna be able to do analysis on whether or not the student was able to perform the skill not the hard work and dedication may be put in to get up to that skill. That testing and grading is not really present for the rubric strategy. Some strengths that go along with the rubric method was that each individual number from one to five was a different and specific difference from each number. So therefore it was a little bit easier and our results were more accurate across the board and within different observers. The rubric is a very easy to grade format after it is done. It might take a little bit of time at first to actually watch each individual student. Because we had four different teachers observing four different groups, we were able to break it down and be successful with this. This is a very reliable format with clear expectations of the students. 
the students can know prior to performing the skill what needs to be done and what the teacher is looking for. This also gives the students detailed feedback. They are able to see what their strengths and weaknesses are when going over their rubric. I hope you guys enjoyed our lesson today on volleyball and the bump. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys can take these skills further. So believe it or not, there is actually a Team USA and it is for disabled people. And what they do is they play sitting volleyball. They actually scoot around using their hands to get under the ball and they pop it over a shorter net. Um, but for our lesson, when we were going over the bump, something that I might uh, add in there is maybe get a smaller group or one-on-one -on -one kind of action with another student where they're just throwing it back and forth. Because at one time we did have a circle um, that students were going back and forth and they could definitely, if they feel comfortable, join that circle and try to keep the ball up and get that count number as high or higher than the other group. We would probably give them a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention and our rubric might be a little bit different um, just because maybe they can't move to a ball diagonally, but maybe moving forward and backwards in a wheelchair could be easier. So we could do something like that where the one in our rubric could be if they're stationary or, and the two could be if they move forward or backwards to get under the ball to maybe set, or in this case, bump the ball. Um, I do think somebody in a wheelchair or somebody else who is disabled, um, would still be fairly successful with this. Um, there's no reason that they can't hit it with the ball. If they have some other issue, again, we would modify to what the specific problem is um, or adaptation and challenge that they have. Um, so it's definitely something we'd consider and we've talked about. And it was uh, actually really cool to experience and see the sitting volleyball of the other players that do participate with the disability. So it is pretty cool. <laughs> great question uh, we'll definitely be thinking more about it because it's always something that you never know if you're gonna have somebody in your class with a uh, disability of some kind um, so it is really important to always have those modifications ready and at hand so it is also something that we hope to bring into future lessons so thank you <laughs>